Okay, so just before I get into this video, I wanted to do a quick mention on this new brand, um, STP Hobby. And I believe it's a, either related to or owned by um, Rush FPV. And they wanted to mention that all the parts that you're going to see later in this video, the flight controllers and the ESCs, are designed to go into this frame here. So this is the STP Gun V2 5 inch frame. And um, I'm not really going to do a frame review here. You can see it's nicely packaged and everything. It's not going to be a whole lot different from a lot of other 5 inch builds, but they are mentioning this specifically for the parts that you'll see later in this video. But it did come, interestingly, uh, the carbon pieces and all these accessory pieces here, the 3D printer parts, etc., came inside this um, LiPo battery bag. And so I'm not exactly sure if it's going to come exactly like that if you buy the frame if you get the battery bag with it. Um, but yeah, this is how it came. All this came together and these are available at Race Day Quads. They can see the frame parts here. I, and battery straps. I will probably do a build with this at some point. I just don't know when because I'm super busy lately. They also sent along the um, GoPro mount for this. I think this is for like a Hero 6 or 7. That's what it looks like. And it looks like it screws into the top weight. I also don't know if this is included or not. Probably not. This is probably an extra cost. I'm probably about 10 bucks or something like that. All right, so in this video, we're checking out a bunch of new products here from Russia FPV. We got a couple of flight controllers and a couple of ESCs. I think one flight controller is analog and one's digital. And we got power filter boards here. So we get everything out of the boxes here. We'll take a look at what they got. And these boxes have the stickers on the back. And so we have. Um, on the left here, the Sport 50 amp 4 in 1 AC and the Blade uh, Super 60 amp 4 in AC here on the right. And these are, I think, believe are 30 by 30. I think all these are 30 by 30 boards. And then here are the flight controllers. We have the F722 digital on the left, and we have the F722 analog on the right. And I believe you see here all these little connectors. This is going to be probably ideal for those of you guys that don't like to do soldering. So still have to solder motor wires and battery leads. So let's take a look at the Sport 50 amp first. So it does come with a little bit of documentation, the manual here. Looks like there's probably three different ones here in this series. You have Sport 50 amp, Speed 60 amp, and Super 60 amp. And it looks like this one is the one I don't have, the Speed 60 amp. And you have your connections here. Uh, for your motor motor connections, and I think these are 32 DC, so you have telemetry and current sensor, of course. And this is the power filter board, which is actually these guys here. And this is an unopened package. And let me just show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like assembled. Uh, you can't look, in, you can't see what's inside the package, but basically you have these two solid capacitors at 35 volt, 330 microfarads. And then you have some, I think these are diodes here on the bottom. And then this actually gets soldered to the battery leads and this is where the battery will come out as well. So this is additional filtration basically is what this is. Um, that's what it's called, the power filter board. I'll show you how that looks on the ECs in a second. Okay, so we have uh, here, we have the additional capacitor. I guess we could use this uh, instead of that one, one or the other, maybe both if you want lots of capacitors. 35 volt, 470 microfarads. Okay, so here's the uh, 400 EC. And then these are the wiring looms and rubber grommets for mounting and vibration dampening. And this is what the EC looks like. So this one's the Sport up to 50 amps and 48 kilohertz. I don't believe this one does 96 kilohertz. I think the Super does. I'll show you that here in a second. But it's got this really nice big heat sink. Actually, it doesn't actually touch anything there. Just the, probably just the MOSFETs here on the side. You can see there's a little bit of a gap there. And then another heat sink here on the other side. I think these are LEDs, if I'm not mistaken. Those look like LEDs. They probably light up and solder pads here on this side. So I think, yeah, this is the top. And one, two, three, four. This would be the back of the quad. Up to, this is uh, up to 6S, I think, for the ESC and 50 amps. And yeah, nice big solder pads here on the side, but you can see where they are in, rel in relation to where they mount. 
So if, if the if flex controller is covering this, it's not going to be easy to get in here. So I would, uh, I actually prefer the pads being on the outside more in this area here, so that if you need to change a motor wire quickly, you can do that. Otherwise, you have to pop the flex controller off the top if the gap between the flex controller and the ESC isn't uh, there. There's not enough space there, so it's kind of hard to get in there for changing motor wires. Uh, but yeah, for the power filter board, it would go on like this. So you want to match positive to positive, so this is backwards. It's got to be like this. If you put it on backwards, you'll have a nice little surprise. The capacitors will blow up when you plug in the battery. Uh, so it should go like this, positive to positive. And so I think what you got to do is solder the boards together first. So it ends up like this. So you can get those, uh, get the board soldered together first. Let's put them together and add solder here. Make sure the boards are together. And what you probably should do is, if you just solder one side, and then that'll hold it together, then solder the other side. So if you only do one side at a time, um, the other side that's cool will hold everything together. So when you, when you go and solder the motor wires, there should be a nice solder blob there, and the other side should be cool, and vice versa. So it shouldn't be too hard to put together, but one thing to, to note is, if you notice the size of the power filter board, it's pretty big. So it's going to be a trouble in terms of getting into the frame uh, in the normal way where uh, the standoffs are probably going to be in the way here. So you're probably going to have to rotate it sideways and have the capacitors here stick out the side of the quad. That's also uh, offers, actually, uh, you know, offers some problems as well because if it's sticking out of the side of the quad, then it can get like damaged from a crash or something like that. So, mm. I'm wondering if there might be a better way to do this, maybe have this somewhere else in the frame and just have some additional wires going from the battery leads to this. Of course, the more length of the wire that is, it reduces the effectiveness of the capacitor. So, yeah, not sure what, what the best solution for that is. If you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments. All right, so the next one here is the Super 60 Amp. So I don't have the Speed 60 Amp. And again, we have your documentation manual. And we can see here on the specs that the Super does do the 96 kilohertz, whereas the Sport is only 40 kilohertz. And if you get the speed, that's also 60 amps, and that does uh, 96 kilohertz as well. But it looks like in terms of the MCU, the difference is, is the F051 and the Sport and the speed at 40 megahertz. And then the Super has the upgraded F350 at 160 8 megahertz. Okay, so unlike the uh, Sport 50 amp, the Super 60 amp does not come with that additional 470 microfarad capacitor. It wasn't in the box. You get the AC, you get the wiring looms, of course, and rubber grommets. And you have, there, there's some different types of wiring looms here for diff different connections to different types of flight controllers other than the Rush ones. But again, here's what it looks like. You got the nice heat sinks, 6S Max, 60 amps, 32 bit up to 96 kilohertz. It's the same form factor. Again, the motor pads are kind of inside here a little bit. Here's the bottom and just show the specs. 40 volt rated MOSFET, uh, F350 MCU, 96 kilohertz. So yeah, I'm going to definitely be interested in checking out 96 kilohertz because I heard it's even smoother than 48 kilohertz. And then here's the firmware. So a lot of the documentation is already labeled right on the heatsink here. It basically looks the same as the um, uh, Sport 50 amp. Let me just show you what the weights of these are. This is the Sport 50 amp, and it's coming in at 17.2 grams. And the Super 60 amp is actually lighter, 16.7 grams. Interestingly enough, yeah, 17.2 and 16.6. Okay. All right, so we'll take a look at the flight controllers here. So we have the digital and the analog. Let's look at the uh, analog first. All right, so you do get the documentation manual, like on the other products as well, front and back. And yeah, this is what I'm mostly interested in here is the wiring. So it has all the uh, labeling for the pads, what they are, and how to wire up everything. So this is what I think this, I'll show you here in a second, but this is what this is going to be different in terms of other 
flight controllers, they, you know, everything is going to be like plug and play. So if you don't like soldering and you want to stay within the Rush FPV ecosystem here, you could probably just um, plug everything in, just have to solder motor wires and the battery lead. I think you're good to go here if you're sticking with all of the uh, Rush FPV stuff. Okay, so you get all these like little rubber grommets and um, spacers, and then you have all of these connections here. So you're gonna have to refer to the uh, wiring diagram to get an idea of what goes with what, but this ought to cover most of your bases here. So I'm, I'm gonna have to try and figure out what goes with these. Some of these actually are bare on one side. So if you are using components that don't have a connector and you have to solder, I think this is probably gonna be for something like a video transmitter here. You have a power ground signal and then probably something for like smart audio. Let's see, it's a four pin connector. So you'll have different connectors here for different uh, components. I think also the in terms of the ASC connections, they provide the connectors without the wire inside. Obviously, if you're using the Rush FPV ESC connectors or ESCs, they're going to have the connectors with the ESC, and then you just plug them in. Uh, but if a different brand of ESC that you're using here, then you'll have to use these little connection uh, basically and uh, rewire the connectors themselves to match the output for these guys here. But this is what the flight controller itself looks like, analog version. And you can see you got this nice metal cover. Normally you have a lot of things where you, you can like access, you know, solder pads. And a typical flight controller, you see lots of solder pads. Here it's all connectors. So if you don't like connectors, you're not gonna like, you're gonna hate this. And then you're gonna have to go with all the solder pads here on the bottom. So if you want to solder, you have to go to the bottom. But these connectors here are going to be for people that don't want to solder. But the solder pads are available on the bottom if you want them. Okay, so another thing about the connectors here from this brand, Russia FPV, is they have these little locking mechanisms you can see here. So here's a four pin connector and let's see here. I think this one is going to be for the camera. So you have the white wire and yellow wire. And so it's going to be the yellow wire is for camera and the red is power and ground, so I'm pretty sure this is what this one here is for. And you can see that these will then lock into place and they won't pull out unless you rip the wires out of the connector completely. So for those of you that don't like connectors because they're not secure, this is the solution uh, basically to keep the connector in there. And then this goes to the other end. This is uh, goes to like an analog camera and then this is probably like um, some sort of controller that says menu here is probably like for camera control, something like that, or um, to emulate the uh, OSD joystick. So that's just one example of one of the connectors here. Okay, so here the bottom of the flight control does reveal some specifications. Obviously, we have an F F722 chip here, voltage range of 7 to 40 volts, has a 5 volt and 5 amp voltage regulator. And we have different pads here to control the voltage here. So we have um, for the camera, if you solder these bridges, these are basically solder bridges. If you solder the center to the right, it'll output five volts to this positive pin here for the camera. And if you solder the center to the left, that'll output battery voltage. And then here in the VTX, same thing. To the left, it's battery voltage. To the right is five volts to this positive pin right there on that pad. And then for the receiver, uh, two in the left is five volts and two in the right is going to be 3.3 volts. Okay, so yeah, here's just the rest of the um, uh, specs here. So it does have a black box chip that I, obviously you can't see is underneath the heatsink metal uh, plating there. So it has 16 megabyte black box chip. It's 3 to 8 S capable, uh, five hardware UARTs, and, and it does support compass and GPS. All right, so this weighs uh, 8.6 grams. Okay, so here's the uh, F722 digital flight controller. And let's just uh, quickly look at the specs. I don't think it's going to be all that different. So you have 7 to 40 volts, MP6000, 3 to 8S LiPo. But this one has two BECs versus the other one only has one. So it's a 5 volt, 5 amp voltage regulator, and a 10 volt, 3 amp voltage regulator for the, uh, basically for the DJI Air unit. And has all the same stuff. 5 UART, supports compass and GPS, 16 megabytes of black box data. 
and has all the same connectors except it's going to have one major difference here and it's going to have the connector for the DJI air unit. Obviously if you're going to be using this with Vista you just it's the same six wires you're going to have to cut it off and solder it to the Vista so if you guys are wondering that's why I don't know if they have if they have include the Vista version Let's see if this might be it here so here we have a connector with six wires. I think this is it. No, it's in a different order. So that's not it. Yeah, it doesn't look like they include one without the DJI connector without just sold bare, bare wires. So this is the one that's included and it will go right there where it says DJI HD. And I'll just plug in like this. And you can see right away with the order of the wires. So the yellow wire is going to be your S bus for RX2. And then you have the ground for the uh, signal. And then you have RX4, TX4, RX4 is white, TX4 is blue. And then you have ground and then 10 volts on the red wire there. So everything's nicely labeled. And so that's another thing about you know going with uh, this kind of a board without, uh, if you just want to use the connectors, you can get away with doing that without having to solder a bunch of stuff. So in the case of uh, doing a DJI build, if you're using the DJI control, you just um, plug this one in here, plug this one into the uh, air unit, and then you just have to uh, use the wiring loom for your ESC. Plug that to your ESC, and of course you have to obviously uh, solder your motor wires and your um, a battery lead, of course. Uh, that's all standard stuff, but much less soldering involved. And then you have this thing called <laughs> connector for Navi. I think this is for a compass and GPS here. So everything is pretty nicely laid out if you want to do that. Another thing I noticed I didn't show is you have the boot, the boot button here, the bootloader button there, plus you have this little cover for the micro USB port. So I guess if you're in an environment where it's dusty or possibly wet, that's kind of nice to have. Uh, if you splash your uh, drone a lot, maybe that's not a bad thing to do. Have, keep that in there. But again, here's the bottom. You can solder here and do all soldering if you don't like connectors, of course. But they're all on the bottom. You get your solder bridges here for you at one. This is probably for a receiver three volts or five volts. And you don't have any of that other stuff uh, for like a analog camera or analog VTX, of course, because this is targeted for the DJI system. So if you are have an analog system uh, or if you're an analog pilot, don't get this one, get the other one, so, and vice versa. They're targeted specifically for a, a, a very uh, specific uh, pilot. Anyway, so that's pretty much it for these guys. I think that I'm going to be updating these links a little bit later. I don't think all of these are in all the stores yet. So if you're watching this in as, as the video has come out, like uh, just after it's came, come out, then there may not be all the links for you. Check back later. I'll update the video description with all the links to additional stores. If you have a specific store you're interested in, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to be on the lookout for that because um, right, right now, at the time of the filming of this video, a lot of these aren't uh, available in all the stores yet.